Hi, my name is Ephraim Shamali and my colleague's name is Lucas McCurley. We are graduate students at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. For the 2014 MATLAB and Simulink Student Design Challenge, we would like to present our work on passive and active balancing of lithium-ion battery cells in real time. Cell balancing is crucial to the state of health and lifespan of batteries in many applications, which include, but are not limited to, the transportation and aerospace sectors. The question then becomes, why is cell balancing necessary? Well, when a battery pack includes numerous cells, a difference in cell voltages will plague the overall state of health and lifespan of the battery pack. Without cell balancing, discharging the pack is limited by the weakest cell, and charging the pack is limited by the strongest cell. In addition, degradation of the cells can occur when overcharging and when under discharging the battery pack. There are two main categories of cell balancing topologies. These are called passive balancing and active balancing schemes. In passive balancing, each cell is connected to a load through a switch. That way, if a cell's state of charge, or what is more commonly referred to as SOC, is larger than the average SOC, the switch will close and its additional energy will be dissipated through the load resistor. In active balancing, the cells are connected to a capacitive load through an array of switches. In this configuration, energy is drawn from the most charged cell and shuttled to the least charged cell through a network of switches. Since this topology transfers the energy from one cell to another, rather than dissipate the energy, it has the advantage of being more energy efficient. The first iteration of our work included passive and active balancing schemes modeled in Simulink with Plex blocks. This used a low fidelity empirical model of lithium ion cells and did not run in real time. To improve on this first iteration of work, we allowed our balancers to operate in real time using a data acquisition system in conjunction with a digital signal processor. This is the case where the code is no longer run in the simulation, but rather is deployed into a representative microprocessor. In the automotive industry, this is referred to as processor-in-the-loop testing of our control system. So in effect, we have developed a low-cost processor-in-the-loop test bench performing similar tasks to DSpace and OpenRT systems for automotive applications. We use Simulink in order to generate C code for our DSP. This is done by using the Automatic Code Generation tab located in the Configuration Parameters. Once a code or target is selected, Simulink can build and run programs onto the DSP. Board-specific blocks can be added to Simulink's library in order to take full advantage of the DSP. This includes digital inputs, outputs, analog to digital converter, as well as pulse width modulation. To improve on our work again, we realized that our low fidelity empirical model of the lithium ion cell can be changed for a more realistic and higher fidelity model. To this end, we obtained a high fidelity physics based model from the MapleSim package. This high fidelity model embedded in the Simulink environment and running in real time through the DSP gave us a more realistic understanding of our balancer's performance. And now we show you the results of our balancers using a high fidelity model and running in real time. In order to illustrate the dramatic effect that a balancing topology can have on a battery pack, we first illustrate four cells charging and undergoing no balancing. On the left hand side, whatever variation existed in the SOC of all four battery cells initially continues to exist throughout the charging cycle of the pack. This becomes obvious when looking at the right hand side where the SOC values rise roughly in a parallel configuration to each other. Therefore, to avoid over voltaging the cells, charging is limited by the cell which has the highest SOC, which in this case is cell 1. The pack then can never be fully charged to its rated capacity since most of the cells will not be able to reach 100% SOC. In passive balancing, the cell with the highest SOC is discharged into the load resistor until the SOC of the other cells catch up to it. At such a point, the SOC of the cells converge to about the same value and the cells can then be fully charged to their rated capacity. This topology is very simple to implement in terms of control logic but its downfall, again, is that it dissipates energy. 
In active balancing, as mentioned earlier, energy is drawn from the most charged cell and shuttled to the least charged cell. This can be seen on the right hand side where the cell with the highest SOC is depleted to the SOC level of the other cells by shuttling its energy to cell 4. This topology has control logic that is more complex but its advantages lie in the fact that energy is not wasted. 